So the last few Mario Party games have been pretty meh. Which is why I'm super happy to report that the newest one in the series is amazing. Mario Party Superstars is a love letter to the series, bringing back 100 of the best minigames from Mario Party 1 to 10 and making those minigames look and play better than ever. After having played this game quite a lot, I feel like it's time for me to rank out my favorite minigames of them all, and this is exactly what we'll be doing today. So make sure to subscribe, hit the bell, and let's just jump into it. When Squid Game was the popular show and everyone was talking about it, I remember seeing this meme showing us that Mario Party was actually the original Squid Game, with characters getting completely destroyed. And Shy Guy says is one of the mini games for that. In this one, all players are inside of a wooden barrel, with Captain Shy Guy raising a red or a white flag. You have to do exactly what he does, because if you mess up just once, you're done for. Goodbye, Mario. The fun thing about this minigame is how Shy Guy is trying to trick you by raising both flags and lowering one afterwards. Or, you know, just straight up changing ideas, forcing you to be fast, but also not too fast. <laughs> this minigame is such a fun one, and I love playing it all the time. Alright, trust me, you don't want to play this next minigame if you have the Joy-Con Drift, because in Crazy Cutters, what's important is to be super precise. Basically, all players are on a jackhammer and a shape is drawn on the floor. Your job is to trace the outlines of that shape without messing it up by going outside or inside of it. You're going to have to trace boos, bloopers, and chain chumps, each coming with their own quirks and challenges. So you actually never know what to expect, which is kind of amazing. Getting a perfect score in this minigame is not an easy task, but if you want to win and get those 10 coins to buy the star, well you better start practicing today. Does anyone remember that moon in Super Mario Odyssey in New Dunk City where you had to play jump rope and get to like 100 consecutive jumps without messing up once? Yeah, that thing was fun but very difficult. Well, Mario Party Superstars decided to bring back a classic from the first two N64 Mario Party games. Welcome to Hot Rope Jump, a jump rope game except the rope is actually flaming hot lava bubbles. You'll want to be extra careful, especially if you're one of the players that's standing on the edges of the rope and you'll want to time your jumps right, which is actually easier said than done. The rope constantly slows down and speeds up randomly, forcing you to react instantly. One of the fun things about this minigame is that you can actually play it for as long as you want in an endless mode. Tell me gamers, what is your personal best? Cakes. I love them. If I could eat a cake every single day, I would. This must be why I love the minigame Cake Factory that much. In this 2v2 minigame, you and your partner are actually waiting for cakes and strawberries to get close to you so you can pick them up and assemble the most beautiful cake ever. The fun thing about this minigame is that both players need to be good, because a cake is not complete without a strawberry on top. So, you know, you have to make sure not to put the strawberry first, that sucks. Or you have to be sure not to put a cake on top of another cake, although this would be very delicious, I am sure. When I was a kid and I was being kind of a bit of a brat, making funny faces, well my parents would always tell me that if I kept making that face, it would get stuck that way. Funny enough, this is exactly what facelift is all about. In this minigame, you start off by seeing Bowser's face getting distorted in weird ways. Once that is done, you and your opponents have to replicate that funny face the best you can by grabbing Bowser's cheeks, nose, eyes, mouth, and etc. Back in the Nintendo 64 era, this minigame was poking fun at how you can do the same thing with Mario's face in Super Mario 64. And even though this reference is getting kinda old now, the minigame is still as fun today as it was back then. Alright, tell me. Do you guys enjoy reading? 
I know I sure do, but let me tell you that if books were as big as the ones in Bookworm, I'm not so sure I'd enjoy it as much. In this game, you and four players are inside of this giant book, with pages falling down on you. Thankfully, the book was vandalized and there are some holes inside the pages, so if you go where the hole will drop down, everything will be just fine. But this is easier said than done though, as some of the holes are shaped in weird ways and not getting pushed by other players becomes quite challenging. The circles are fine, but those moon-shaped holes though, <sighs> I truly despise them. Just like Hot Rope Jump, this minigame can actually be played forever and you can aim at getting the world record. But you know what, I'm not really good at this one, so yeah, I will not get the WR, sadly. Some people like to take ice baths, as it apparently improves their thoughts and focus. This may be true, but I know that if you're playing pushy penguins, this is the last thing you want to do. Basically, every player is standing on a giant icy block and the goal is to not fall down in the ice cold water. Easy enough, right? Well, did I forget to tell you about the hundreds of penguins running toward you? Oops! Yes, there's a bunch of penguins running and you have to move in between them in order to stay alive and warm. This will be easier said than done, because there's some really big penguins that are actually very hard to dodge and all of the penguins run at different speed, so sometimes you see an opening and it closes in front of your eyes. No! Most minigames in the Mario Party series are pretty simple, and only a few actually force you to use multiple mechanics at once. This is the case for my next pick, Dungeon Duos. This minigame is a 2v2 one where you and your partner must work together to get to the end of an obstacle course. You start off by having to mash buttons in order to open up doors for your teammate, only to then push another button to spin some platforms in order to cross this big gap. Once that is done, the minigame ain't over yet, because you still have to find which pipe leads to the end of the obstacle course. Finally, if you want to escape the dungeon, you'll have to mash L and R super quickly to pump some air and use the hot air balloon to free yourself and win the minigame. Whew, seriously, this one is an adventure, and I secretly wish there were more complex minigames like this one in the Mario Party series. Well, you knew this minigame had to appear on the list sooner than later. There's no use explaining what Bumper Balls is all about. Everyone has played this game, and everyone I know enjoys it. Everyone is on a big balloon, and you have to push each other out of the arena. The last player standing wins. That's it, it's that simple. There are multiple arenas for Bumper Balls this time around, and some of them have bumps making it very challenging to win. This is one of those minigames that actually force you to put yourself in danger if you want to gain some speed and defeat your opponents. I think they call those minigames risk and reward? Anyways, it's a great one. Alright, alright, before we get to number one, here are some honorable mentions. What a fun minigame! You have to tilt the joystick to move faster, but if you move too fast, you'll just skid around and will come to a complete stop. In Bombs Away, you have to move around this tilting island, dodging cannonballs and your enemies, which is actually easier said than done. Trace Race and Crazy Cutters are actually really similar, but I decided only to pick one for the list. The thing is, if you like tracing stuff, this minigame won't disappoint. Mashing the A button to eat pizza? Yep, it's that simple, but it's surprisingly fun. And yummy. So this minigame is a classic, and it's definitely my favorite in the series at this point. Mushroom Mixup forces you to take a look at this toad in the corner, as he will show you which mushroom is safe and which are not. The thing is, you can jump and do some ground pound attacks, so you can decide to play it nice and friendly, just moving from one mushroom to the next and minding your own business, or you can play this minigame like a complete mad lad and try to squish your enemy, thus ruining their chances of going on the mushroom on time. 
Yeah, everybody plays this minigame differently. And that is probably what makes it so fun. You never know what to expect. Wow, those minigames were pretty awesome, right? But even though Mario Party Superstars is a great game, it also features some not-so-great minigames. And tomorrow I'll post a link of my 10 least favorite minigames from this series. So make sure to subscribe, because you don't want to miss it. And if you're watching this in the future, well, you can just tap the cards on screen right now to watch it instantly. Well, I guess living in the future has its perks, right? Hmm. Anyways, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye! The Matrix changed my life. The last few Mario Party games have been pretty... meh. Which is why I'm super happy to report that the newest one in the series is amazing. Mario Party Superstars is a love letter to the series, bringing back 100 of the best minigames from Mario Party 1 to 10, and making those minigames look and play better than ever. Sadly, amongst those 100 minigames, some of the choices are not the best and they made me wish that we could replace them with something else. Today, I'll rank out my least favorite Mario Party Superstars minigames, so make sure to subscribe and hit the bell, and let's just jump into it. Let's start off this list by saying that I'm not the biggest fan of randomness, which is probably why I don't have that much fun playing Manor of Escape. In this minigame, everybody starts on top of this big mansion and the goal is to open up some doors randomly and hope that they bring you down. There's one good door and five wrong ones on each floor, and everyone has the same mansion, so as soon as someone is lucky enough to find the correct door, everybody will just follow in their footsteps, rendering this minigame quite pointless. The best strategy is actually just to let someone else find the good door up until you end up on the very last floor, and then you hope that you're gonna be the lucky winner. Doesn't that sound fun, eh? Well, it's not. Do you know what the difference between the Mario Party minigames and WarioWare's micro games is? The duration. Usually, you can expect minigames to last about 30 seconds or more, while the micro games usually end up taking 5 seconds or less to clear. Well, someone clearly didn't get the memo when creating Tackle Takedown, an American football minigame where three players are actually blockers and one player is the attacker. The goal of the solo player is to get to the goal zone to get a touchdown, while the three other players just aim at blocking him. The thing is, as soon as one player tackles the solo dude, the game's over, and this usually takes about... Mm, 3 seconds maybe? Like, this is what a typical tackle takedown session looks like. Wow, that was fun. <laughs> Not. It's no surprise that my least favorite type of minigame is the coin collecting one. Simply put, in those minigames, the goal is to collect some yucky coins and basically everyone's a winner. Quicksand Cash has one player in the middle as a big Bowser, spinning the sand left and right, aiming at preventing the other three players from collecting those coins. If you spin correctly, the coin will touch you instead of them. And that's it, that's the whole minigame. 30 seconds of this. Obviously, the solo player has the advantage, as the three other players are way too slow, making this game unfair on top of being unfun. Look, Mario is no stranger to sports games. Mario Tennis, Mario Baseball, Mario Soccer, Mario Basketball, blah blah blah. Some of these games are quite fun, which is why I see no point to having a minigame like Chip Shot Challenge, which is basically a bad version of Mario Golf. Each player has one chance at sending the golf ball inside of the hole, and the player that's the closest to it wins the minigame. There's not more to it. Just hope that you move the cursor correctly on your first try, and that's it. 
The best strategy here is to hope you're not going to go first, because you can see how other players aim and just mimic them if they do it right or adjust yourself if they do it wrong. Pretty dumb. Hey, here's another coin collecting mini game, except this one is boring and totally uninspired. Introducing Winner or Dinner, a mini game where you and your opponents are on a platform in the middle of the desert on which coins appear randomly. You have to move to get said coins, but you have to avoid the four piranha plants that want to eat you and make you lose time, as well as the spiky balls getting shot out of the cannon at the center of the stage. This is seriously a boring minigame. So boring in fact that right after the game's over, a big tornado appears and kills everyone. <laughs> yeah, literally, I'm not making this up. What were they on when they designed this game? It's so stupid. The rules are simple. Each character is holding a rope with a big cage hanging at the end of it. There's a bunch of Goombas walking down there, and you have to drop the cage on top of as many Goombas as you can. Welcome to Trap Ease Artist. And it's over. Yep, this minigame is another one that's way too short. Basically, you get one chance at capturing as many Goombas as you can, and that's it. As soon as one player drops their cage, everybody will do the same to try to get the remaining Goombas, and the game's gonna be over. There's not much strategy involved to win this game, other than to hope that there's going to be a bunch of Goombas close to you when the game begins. This minigame could have been the best of three, at least it would have made more sense, it would have made it more fair and more fun, but alas, it's just another uninspired short micro game. This next one is a 2v2 minigame where you and your ally have to bounce on this catapult looking thingy to get in the clouds and gather up some floating coins. Each player gets two bounces each, and usually if you and your ally are smart enough, you can easily collect all of the coins, rendering this minigame worthless. Every time I play it with friends, we just all get all of the coins and move on to the next turn. Like, I'm sorry, but it's not a fun minigame. And it's not even because you're collecting coins. You could be collecting bananas for all I care, and this minigame wouldn't be any more fun. It has been brought to my attention that a lot of people think that the 3v1 minigame category is mostly unbalanced. Either the solo player wins them all, or it's the team that wins. Well, I would have to agree with you. And here's another one that's broken. Tidal Toss. In this game, the team of three has to stay on the watery platform, while the solo player in the middle has to do ground pun attacks to create some tidal waves meant to kick the other players off it. And to be fair, if you're creating the waves, this is going to be a total joke. Even if the other players are just a bit good at it, you can easily fool them by creating a tiny wave followed by a big wave. And usually, this is all that is needed to win. And if you're playing this game against the CPUs, well, get ready for an easy victory. I don't feel like my list is controversial so far, but this next pick might be. I told you at the beginning of the list that I'm not the biggest fan of random minigames. I get it, Mario Party is a board game and it's actually full of randomness. The dice roll, the star location, the event spaces, and so much more. But when it comes to mini games, I want the most skilled player to win, not the luckiest. And that's exactly my gripe with Bowser's Big Blast. Basically, this big Bowser head is a ticking bomb, and all players take turn pushing one of those levers hoping that the bomb doesn't blow up in their faces. That is all there is to it. There's no strategy involved, it's just pure luck. And that bothers me, especially while I'm trying to get the win all minigames achievement. Yeah, this one is just infuriating. Mario Party 1 was full of minigames where you had to rotate your control stick as fast as you could usually resulting in breaking your controller or breaking your hand. Well, surprisingly enough, Nintendo brought back some of the joystick rotating minigames, 
although they now provide you with a warning telling you not to use the palm of your hand. But trust me, if you want to win castaways, you're going to have to do just that. This minigame is dumb. You have to flick the joystick to throw a fishing hand onto a coin, money bag or chest. And then you have to rotate the stick to bring it back. But the timing is really precise and I just cannot throw my line in the middle row no matter what I do. What I'm trying to say here is that this minigame doesn't work. It forces you to burn the palm of your hand and it's just plain boring. Plus, you have to collect coins, which is really cringe. Alright, well these minigames were not the best, eh? But thankfully, Mario Party Superstars is a phenomenal game and it contains some of the best minigames ever. I posted a list of my 10 favorite minigames from this one, so tap the card on screen somewhere to go watch it right now. And if you did already, well, uh, you're cool, I like you. But anyways, I'll see you in the next one.